Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So it's been a little while since I've recorded. We're gonna do two today, and then uh, next week I'm gonna record at least one, maybe two more. Um, just got you know, how my schedule's gonna work out. So um, first, let's just get into uh, the first wine. Now this is, I think, probably the last of my underground cellar wines that I have in stock right now. Uh, so underground cellar, real quick. It's an online uh, ordering, wine ordering place. They have daily deals and you have these possibilities of upgrades. Um, as long as you order at least two bottles of wine, you're, you're guaranteed one upgrade. And if you get like six bottles of wine, you usually get three upgrades. And these upgrades can be anything from the next level up to like a wine that could cost like $3,000. Usually it's closer to like a few hundred dollars but sometimes they've had Screaming Eagle specials and First Growth specials and Magnums and all this other stuff. So if you're a gambling kind of person like I am, that's kind of a cool little gimmick. So um, uh, they've done a pretty good job of, of bringing in some decent wines or at least look like they're decent wines. So um, so these two wines actually just by Coinkydink um, have a connection. So um, when I was doing the research, I just happened to pick four wines to do for today you know, two for this show, two for the next show. Uh, actually, the next show I think is going to be a, uh, the Albarino special. Um, but I, uh, I was just picking these wines, and as I'm doing the research, I found out that they have a connection. So first up, this is the uh, 2012 Hadas de Pique Carminer, not Carminier, as Master Psalm Peter Neptune will let you know, uh, Reserva. Uh, this is from the Maipo Valley in Chile. Now this wine, um, I said I got from Underground Cellar. I think this was the initial, um, I think this might have been the initial, uh, uh, or, or the lowest, you know, the minimum wine uh, at $14. Uh, that's what I paid for it. Um, I don't know if I got any upgrades with it. Um, I might have, I might not have, I don't really know. I'd have to look at, I'd have to look at that. But um, anyway, so, um, a little, little bit of history with these guys. There we go. Just doesn't seem like it's really pouring very well today on the Corvin. Um, these guys have been together. Well, I'm looking at the winery side, not the... All right, first, what is Haras? Haras is, um, has to do with horses. It's, um, it's like a stable and, uh, in Chile. So... Uh, so originally this was a horse farm or a stable or whatever, you know, and, and I realized the other day, wow, this was really hard to pull out. I realized the other day that, um, or actually earlier today, that I probably shouldn't keep, I shouldn't leave the thing in there as I'm doing the review because it might be allowing the gas to escape. Um, not that I've had any wine go bad on me because I haven't, but um, probably good idea to pull the needle out, otherwise the gas will come out. Anyway, um, so they've been around for a long, long time. Um, so they've done thoroughbred breeding, and they have 600 hectares, and they started in 1892 as, as, as a horse farm. Only um, since 1992 uh, have they been uh, planting vines and making wine. So in 98, I think it was their first year of making any wines. Um, they also are connected with um, the Antonori family. Um, so Antonori has been around since a long time. That's who these guys are, okay? Um, but they, they, came, um, they became a, uh, a partner in this winery in 2002. So a little background on these guys. Again, fourteen dollars. So let's check it out. All 
almost like um I don't want to say cooked fruit, but like prunish. So yeah, so almost like prune. Uh, definitely red, purplish fruits. Maybe a little bit of blueberry. I had a blueberry recently, just kind of get that flavor again. So I hadn't had one in a while. It, it reminded me that man, the 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 blueberry cereal. While it was an exaggeration of blueberries, man, it really reminded me of that cereal. Uh, a little bit of wood to it. It smells like, it smells dry. Like, you know, um, dry wood or dry leaves. Maybe a hint of cocoa or chocolate to it. Like cocoa powder type of thing. That's about it. Tart, um, kind of, it's, it's dry, dry tasting, like it really dries out the mouth. Um, I'm going to take another sip here. Yeah, so it's not very fruit forward. Um, it's, it's really tart, like tart fruit, tart red fruits. Um, not even any, I don't have any tart blueberries. Almost, almost like, almost like that. Have you ever had actual cranberry juice? Not the cranberry cocktail juice that you buy at the grocery store, but like, you know, cranberries that were smashed to make juice. It's got that bit of bitterness to it. Um, not quite a cranberry bitterness. Um, tobacco. Yeah, like like really like just I'm, like I, I've got stuff in my mouth full of tobacco leaves. Um, very, very dry. I mean, it, I get a dry sensation, but it's not like the tannins are killing me. Um, and, and a little bit of smokiness to it. Like when I'm breathing out, like I'm, I'm next to the barbecue pit. So like, you know, charred coals, um, that type of thing. Kind of, so kind of smoky. Um, this really begs for food because of the dryness of it. This is not a wine you're just going to kind of chill in the back, you know, on the back porch or in the front porch or at the pool and sip on. Um, you, you got to have some roasted meats or, you know, stuff with some, some body to it, some fat to it, some maybe, you know, gravies, that kind of thing. Uh, cheeses, <clears throat> um... I don't know. I mean, whether it's even a hard cheese or a soft cheese, to me, it's it's not going to make a difference necessarily. They're they're both going to go well, but maybe the hard cheese is more than the soft cheeses. This is um, I, I really like it. This is a fourteen dollar bottle of wine, so this is not something that's going to um, it's not meant to be some hundred and fifty dollar bottle of wine that's going to just knock your socks off. But if you if you need something, I, I'm going to say something for like winter, fall, winter, that you're going to have those heartier meals for, this is a wine you want for that. Mmm. Here's the difference between me doing a video wine review and a written blog. So I only have a few minutes to evaluate the wine. I know I go seven, eight, 10 minutes per wine, especially the first one, I talk like three or four minutes already. But now I'm getting some green pepper. So the wine evolves. So that's the difference between doing this on video and doing it. I, if I have an hour to like evaluate a, a bottle of wine, man, I can make up all kinds of stuff that I taste. Well, not make up, but I can tell you all kinds of things throughout a whole experience. So this is your initial reaction. So I'm getting this, this is opening up. Definitely getting some peppers. Um, 
not overwhelmingly, but that hint, that hint of, of, of pepper, of green pepper, which I like. I know some people think it's a flaw. Maybe it technically is a flaw. Um, some people hate it. I like it, but it's not the overwhelming uh, flavor profile. Uh, if you can find this wine somewhere, um, I would recommend it. It's a pretty darn good wine, to be perfectly honest. All right, so let's move on to our next wine. Wine number two. All right, so wine number two. Oh, I guess I should do this. All right, so wine number two is the 2008 um, Tenute de Pianali Coronato from Bulgari. 2008, like I said. Um, now, this wine was a gift from a friend uh, who's in the wine business. I uh, just said, hey, why don't you try this wine? I'm like, okay. Now, that was an easier... <laughs> That was an easier cork to go through. This one felt like it was like rock solid. Um, I did find it on wine.com, the current vintage for $53.99. So, um, this is not a cheap wine. I was actually surprised with the price of this. I thought it was gonna be a little bit cheaper, but I mean, not like $14 cheaper, but I figured it was gonna be, didn't think it was gonna be like 54 bucks. Uh, so where's Bulgari? Well, Bulgari is in the western part of Tuscany. Now that's um, like the southwestern part of Tuscany. He's near the Tyrian Sea. Um, let's uh, close that out. No, that's not what I want. So they say that they are only a few miles east of the Tyrian Sea on a gently sloping, sloping plateau. Um, now this is also from the Antinori family, even though it doesn't really say anything on here that I can actually see, um, but they are the people that um, control this. Um, they're the ones that control this. By the way, the other, the other day I actually finally changed the capsule. So from the very first episode I used uh, this thing, um, I finally changed out the capsule. So it took a really long time. But then again, you know, once I drink, once I taste these wines, I don't necessarily drink them uh, that quickly. Matter of fact, I need to start drinking them because I'm, I'm running out of room. Uh, I got a lot of wine that I can't fit in the uh, cooler. Really, because a lot of that wine in the cooler is from Napa, so I got to start drinking it. Anyway, um, all right, so it's in the Alta Maramema uh, in Western Tuscany, like I just said, uh, near the sea. Now, this is um, a, if I remember correctly, this is 100% Sangiovese, but... Um, that was the one thing I didn't look at real quick to see what it was. All right, so let's just go into this and then I can, um, let's just evaluate the wine. Kind of a different smell, not used to that. I'm not saying it's a smell I've never smelled before, but it's just not the usual. I mean, okay, I get generic red fruits, blah, 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 but the specific fruit, I'm going to say it's raspberry-like. By that, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to peg a fruit if I had to identify one instead of just being generic with it. But I don't get like any like aromas of wood or earth or flowers. Um, I really couldn't. I mean, if I just from smelling it, if I had to tell you what kind of wood was used with this, I wouldn't be able to. But it's you know somewhat of a sweet. I hate to use the word sweet, but. It's just that this other one was so dry in comparison that um, this, this smells a little bit sweeter, fuller, richer.
It's got a tartness to it also. Um, really high acid. Um, and the tannins are probably about medium medium tannins. This, these were, the tannins felt like they were medium minus, maybe even low. But a little bit heavier on the tannins. And really, like not out of balance acidic, but you can really feel the acid on this. Again, a wine that really begs to have food. Um, I wouldn't necessarily be, here we go. Uh, Something I'm not a wine I wouldn't necessarily just want to be kicking back and uh, chilling with. Let's see here, real quick. Uh, bah, bah, bah. All right, so it is. They have spicy vanilla notes. Maybe it's like a cease that I'm getting. All right, so they say it's Cabernet Sauvignon and Petit Verdot. Uh, Cabernet Franc and Merlot, so effectively a Bordeaux blend, but the Cab is the most dominant uh, varietal out of all of them. So that's what I was trying to find. AKA Super Tuscan. Um, you know, I've had cab blends before, right? But this has a little bit different quality to it. So, you know, if you're if you're used to the stereotypical California Cabernet blend or, you know, Bordeaux blend or Meritage, it comes out of California that is really kind of bold, maybe is a good word for it. Like, you're, you're kind of like, whoa, I, I, I thought this was supposed to be, you know, a little, not supposed to, but maybe it was gonna be a little bit lighter in style. This is a little bit lighter in style. Even though it's got about medium plus tannins and it's got, um, you know, the good acidity, um, it's also a little bit fuzzy. Like I feel like I'm, uh, you know, feel like I'm, uh, I just bit into the, the skin of a peach. So I got a little peach fuzz going on in there with the tannins. Um, you know, this is, this is one that, well, I, you know, I, I said you wanted heavier food with. This one, I can see having a little bit lighter food. So you could pair this with, okay, we'll go for the typical Italian stuff right now. We have pizzas and pastas, right, with red sauce. Um, you could put this with any steak, no matter, maybe a steak pizzaiola, um, or just a regular old steak that you just put salt and pepper on it. Um, I can see doing this with some pot roast, with... Um, even with like meatloaf, so you're you know pretty much any meat's gonna go well with this. This is this is um this is a wine that can that can really pair with most things. Most things beef, and then you can even do. <laughs> I was gonna try to. Uh, you can even do like some pork chops, um, maybe even some lamb, some veal, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't think you can go too much lighter in, in the food fare with that. But yeah, it's it's a pretty good wine. Now, is it worth fifty four dollars? I guess. I mean, I haven't had a lot of fifty four dollar wines from Italy, but the ones I have had are about the same quality. So, um, you know, if I was paying thirty bucks for it, I'd probably be like, yeah, this is good. So we're getting close to fifty five dollars, fifty four dollars, whatever. Um, it's not. It's not like you're gonna feel like you got taken to the bank or taken for a ride or whatever. You know, that you didn't get your money's worth out of it. Um, I wanna drink more, but I didn't wanna like, you know, pop the core of it again. Um, so, if you're looking for a Bordeaux blend, that's a Super Tuscan basically, um, that's a little bit lighter in style, that doesn't taste like your typical New World Meritage, um, that can pair well with just about any red meat dish. Um, I mean, I can see having this with beef ravioli. I mean, I know since I'm drinking Italian wine, I'm thinking about Italian foods that go with it. But, you know, if you've, if you've got, you know, steaks, um, you've got, you could do this definitely with, with sausages. Um, what else? You know, if you, anything that you can grill or broil, <laughs> you, it, it'll go well with that. Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty darn good. Um, so yeah, that's that's the review. So um, what's coming up? I've got 
more wine to review. Um, potentially, well, I'm supposed to get something in the mail soon. Uh, a product that's not wine, but wine related, alcohol related to review. Um, that I was a little bit hesitant to even say yes to, but I figured if nothing else, um, it, it's just something to, to put out there to see if it might be helpful for, for some people or not. Um, so that's coming probably sometime in September. Going to Texom uh, here in about three weeks or whatever it is, the second weekend in August. So I am super pumped for that. I'll be volunteering the entire time. Um, I got so much out of volunteering last year that I felt that it was a better use of my time and money to volunteer rather than trying to sign up for courses because being behind the scenes and, and being able to work with the people that put on the, the event, I think is going to be more beneficial to me um, as far as a career, um, as far as knowledge, than necessarily worrying about trying to get to the next thing. And the thing about volunteering is you're in, I mean, it may not be your first choice um, session, but you're in a session. So you're, you're going to listen to the presentation, okay? Um, now, you're not, sitting, you're not necessarily sitting down drinking the wine with everybody, but you're going to end up tasting those wines anyway. So, um, you know, you're still going to get knowledge. So that, I think it's great. And i um, going to be up there a couple days in advance and then come back on Tuesday. Um, let's see what else. Uh, something I'm going to take a page out of uh, Livy Dalton's book. Uh, if you're watching on iTunes, even if, even if you're not, you're watching elsewhere, pop over to iTunes. Give me a few good reviews, five star preferably. Um, that just helps other people find it on iTunes if you're looking for a wine show, uh, especially with the lack of video wine shows out there and everything's audio. Um, so do that. Um, you can also visit the website. I'll have clink, uh, clinks. Of links below that you can click um, about the wines. Um, of course, uh, I did have a I did have a post about being a psalm uh, for for a true real psalm for the for this past year and advice to people that are new to being a psalm itself, not you know necessarily someone that's a seasoned veteran. Um, so some stuff I've kind of picked up over the past year, and I don't plan I don't profess to. Uh, know everything there is because I'm told every day I learn something about how to be a psalm and about wine in general. Um, so just some, you know, just kind of some advice like, hey, you're a new psalm somewhere, especially if you don't have somebody over you like I do that's been there before in the same capacity, you know, where, you know, if you're, you're at a restaurant where you're, your boss is somebody that really wasn't into wine. They're just the they're just the GM or they're the chef, and they rely on other people. So if 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 you're kind of new to the business, things that you can look out for to avoid some pitfalls. So things like that. Um, of course, you can friend me up well, friend me up above. You can hit the donate button over there. Send me a few ducats. Remember that donate button that's over there. Send five bucks or five thousand dollars. Whatever you want to do, uh, you can hit that and. Um, Leave comments below. And hopefully, I think, if somebody out there, please, who might be watching on TiVo, please confirm they're back on, because I think um, everything's back on TiVo, because it looks like my numbers have spiked up again. So it looks like the TiVo numbers are coming through. Um, it's just that the, the, the way the stats come in, um, it doesn't say TiVo. And the first, you know, before TiVo changed things around, um, I could kind of tell because it was being reported as one type of device or one type of uh, distribution, and that distribution pretty much no longer happens anymore, but a new version has shown, has shown up with decent numbers. So I'm pretty sure that that means it's TiVo. So if you're on TiVo, shoot me an email, hit me a, give me a tweet or whatever, put, a, put the comment down there that, yes, we're watching you on TiVo. Um, and, or Roku. I know I'm on Roku with the iWine TV, YouTube, all that stuff. So I'm, I'm everywhere. Anyway, that's going to do it. I just want to thank you all for stopping by. Um, and we'll see everyone again next time.